All right, you've seen robotic grippers that cost more than my entire workshop. Sleek, polished, probably built by a team in matching lab coats. This isn't one of those. This is my gripper, printed in parts, assembled with hope, and tuned with occasional frustration. So here it is, my robotic gripper. Fully 3D printed, mostly functional, occasionally stubborn, but proudly mine. No polished studio gear or CNC magic, just CAD, servos, and a printer that's seen more retries than I care to admit. So, why 3D print a robotic gripper? Because it's fast, affordable, and perfect for prototyping. Instead of dropping money on machined parts, I can tweak a design at midnight and hit print before bed. Metal might be stronger, sure, but plastic is budget-friendly and iteration-friendly, and when you're trying to turn ideas into reality, that counts for a lot. The concept was inspired by Robotik's modular fingertip designs. I wanted a gripper that could adapt, grip smoothly, and look halfway decent on camera. So I swapped out gears for a fully 3D printed lead screw, driven by a servo for precise control. This way, the whole system stayed true to additive manufacturing. No extra machining required. Before we look at the gripper itself, let's take a moment to break down one of the key components behind how it moves, the lead screw. A lead screw is basically a mechanical translator. You feed in rotary motion from a motor and thanks to its spiral threads, it converts that into smooth, straight line movement. It's simple, reliable, and surprisingly precise, especially when paired with a servo. In my case, it's what allows the fingers to open and close with control without relying on traditional gears. And if this looks familiar, it should. Most FDM 3D printers use lead screws to control their Z-axis movement. It's the same principle, just repurposed here for robotic motion. Getting the lead screw and servo positioning right was critical for smooth, reliable motion. Even a slight misalignment could throw off the grip or cause binding. And because the servo mount sat right next to the lead screw channel, I had to be extra careful. The servo mount, the threaded hole guiding the lead screw, and the lead screw's anchor point in the moving part, all of them had to align precisely. So I spent extra time in CAD dialing in those placements to make sure everything worked as one solid unit. With years of 3D printing, I've learned it's best to design using as many small but strong parts as possible. 3D printing fails more than it works, especially when you're creating something complex. This way, when something does go wrong, it's just a few hours to reprint a section instead of days spent rebuilding a large piece from scratch. That mindset really shaped how I approached this gripper. Each part was designed to be replaceable, so iteration felt less like starting over and more like refining one puzzle piece at a time. The trade-off? More screws, more alignment steps, and a few awkward fits along the way. Now it wasn't all smooth sailing. Some of the trickier spots were deep holes or narrow gaps. Support removal in those areas was, let's call it, a learning experience. I also ran into a few compatibility issues, like the servo gear not fitting cleanly inside the motor housing, Reprinting both halves would have meant another 8 to 10 hours down the drain, so instead, I grabbed a hot soldering iron and carefully melted away the interference. Probably not textbook, definitely not pretty, but it worked, and that's what mattered. I also had to rethink the print orientation on parts like the lead screw. The right angle meant fewer layer lines, stronger axial strength, and a better surface finish. Get it wrong, and the screw can bind mid-turn or even snap under load. Print orientation can also help reduce the need for support material, making parts easier to post-process and clean. Despite the hurdles, the lead screw mechanism delivered smooth motion, consistent control, and no backlash. The gripper didn't just move, it moved intentionally, which is a win in my book, but just as important as the motion itself was the way it was transmitted. I based the finger movement on a synchronized linkage system, similar to what Robotique uses. It's a mechanically coupled setup, where the rotation of one joint directly affects the next, 
through a series of fixed pivots. That means when one segment of the finger moves, the rest follow in a precise pattern. This kind of motion isn't powered individually. It's driven by careful constraint and geometry. If the angles or pivot points are off, the whole system binds or stalls. So a lot of thought went into getting those relationships right in CAD. Every link, rotation point and anchor had to work in harmony or the gripper wouldn't close the way it was supposed to. That said, it still doesn't close as precisely as I want it to, most likely due to the length of one of the pieces throwing off the motion chain, but I'll fine tune that in the next version. Is it perfect? Not even close, but that's kind of the point. This grip is about exploration, problem solving, and showing what's possible when you stick to 3D printing. No excuses, just iteration. So if you're into DIY robotics, practical builds, or just enjoy seeing projects evolve one layer at a time, don't forget to subscribe. There's plenty more to come.